First story. My entitled brother demands I put down my dog because he growled at his daughter, who harassed him constantly. When I refused, he went to my parents, thinking they would side with him, then cut ties with the whole family, accusing us of choosing a dog over his child. Hi everyone. I have fostered a multitude of dogs in my life and dealt with a lot of behavioral problems dog aggression, cat aggression, food aggression, separation anxiety, super high prey drives, etc. I've seen it all, and I've certainly encountered my fair share of dogs who weren't safe around small children. So I feel extremely confident in saying my current five-year-old lab mix is safe for kids. He's basically a gigantic teddy bear, and he loves everyone. However, it's always been my personal philosophy that dogs and any other animal really should never be left alone with young kids, even if they're the sweetest, most mild-mannered dog in the world. The kids don't understand when they're pushing the dog past its limits and the dog cannot reasonably be expected to put up with being harassed long after it's signaled that it would like to be left alone. My niece has never been good with my dog. She pulls his tail, climbs on or lays on him, hits him, pulls his ears, gets in his face and yells at him, and never gives him a second to himself unless she's forced to. He is basically a saint with her, but every dog has its limits. I stay as on top of this behavior as I can, forcing her to leave him alone when it starts to seem like too much and locking him away in a bedroom if she won't. My brother and Sil30F really just don't get it, though. I've tried to talk to them about this behavior a bunch of times, and they know it's wrong. But they think it's wrong in the same way that her refusing to share, or not picking up her toys is wrong. They don't understand that it's dangerous, and that if she was left alone long enough, my dog might lose it and attack her. This has been going on for over a year. I've tried to have this conversation with my brother over and over, but he always acts like I'm criticizing his parenting which is not the case. I don't think my niece is especially bratty or out of control for a kid that age. It's just that this behavior is dangerous to both her and my dog, and it needs constant intervention. The same way that a small kid playing with a stove isn't especially bratty. It's just especially dangerous and needs to be curbed ASAP. I even tried having a dog trainer friend explain this to him, and he still didn't get it. I've tried to come up with excuses for why we can never meet at my house for our family hangouts, but I couldn't think of one the other day and my brother and niece came over. I was cooking dinner and not paying enough attention to make sure my dog was okay which was absolutely my fault, and I accept responsibility. I asked my brother a few times to keep her away from my dog, but he kept saying she was fine. I did move my niece away from him a few times, but I wasn't vigilant enough, and my dog ended up getting to the end of his rope and growling at my niece. I immediately grabbed my dog and brought him into my bedroom. I did not punish him at all. Frankly, I'm glad that he signaled loud and clear that he was uncomfortable. I would never want to discourage him from doing that, because then next time, he'd skip the growling and go straight to attacking. I came out of the room, ready to talk to my brother about how this is what I've been talking about. But he was furious, yelled that my dog was a menace who should be put down, and left. I completely understood his reaction. That's his daughter, and he was afraid for her, and nothing else mattered to him. But he hasn't calmed down at all since this happened and won't talk to me, except to say my dog needs to be put down, and he won't be speaking to me until it's done. He's also tried to involve our parents, who said they will absolutely not be getting involved they know my niece's behavior with my dog has been a problem in the past. I have not heard from my sill at all, which makes me think she might agree with me, knowing her personality type. I don't really think she'd sit out a fight like this if she thought my dog was dangerous. The way I see it, this is solely my fault and my brother's fault. I shouldn't have allowed my niece to harass my dog. I knew what could happen, and I was more concerned about how upset my brother got when I tried to bring it up than I was about my niece's safety. I should have just said my niece wasn't allowed around my dog until she got a bit older and dealt with whatever fallout there was within my family. Similarly, my brother should have kept a better eye on his kid and not been so defensive when I tried to explain the problem. My dog, on the other hand, put up with being harassed for over a year, and when he was finally pushed to his limits, he signaled very loudly and harmlessly that he needed to be removed from the situation. He is not dangerous, and I will not put him down. My brother is now saying that the entire family has sided with a dog over his child, which is not the case. It's just that there are lots of other solutions to this problem. I am perfectly happy to crate my dog when they come over, leave him in another room, or just never have them over again and hang out somewhere else. There's no reason for my niece to ever see my dog again, and I'd be happy to talk over a solution with him. It's just that he won't talk to me at all, and I don't know what to do. Should I give him more time to cool off? Should I go over to his house and try to talk? 
I don't want to ruin this relationship. We are very close, but I'm just not putting my dog down over this. TLDR. After a year of warnings and my brother refusing to do anything about it, my dog got fed up and growled at my niece. Now he wants my dog put down and won't talk to me until I do it. Update. Hey everyone, thank you so much for the advice on my previous post. It blew up while I was asleep, and I couldn't respond to everyone's comments. But I did really appreciate all the people who took the time to give me advice on how to handle my brother. This update is kind of a mixed bag. My family has been having dinner together one night a week since the pandemic started, usually at my parents' house. This week, I thought my brother and his family would sit it out, and it would just be me and my parents. But my sill showed up without my brother or niece. She said she absolutely did not want to discuss what happened, so we didn't. But I can't imagine how pissed she must be at my brother to openly go against him, so she could attend a dinner with her in-laws. So that's good. Since dinner went well, and we all had a good time, I decided to send my brother a text this morning to try to make amends. The text I sent. Hey bud. We missed you and niece at dinner last night. I was hoping you'd come by so we could talk about what happened with niece and doc. I understand why you're upset, and I'm really sorry that niece was scared. You know how much I love niece, and I'd never want anything bad to happen to her. I absolutely won't put the dog down, though. He's not dangerous. It's just that he can't talk. So he growled to communicate that he wanted niece to leave him alone. He's a family member to me. I can't put him down. Especially when he didn't do anything wrong. But there are lots of other solutions we can work out to keep nice safe. I'm totally fine if no one in your family ever wants to see the dog again. Or if you want, we can talk with dog trainer friend to try to figure something out that keeps everyone safe. You know, I think you're a great dad and doing an awesome job with niece. But I really think she would benefit from understanding how to treat animals. The next dog she meets might not be as relaxed as mine, and she could really get hurt. We can work on teaching her together. Do you want to meet for dinner next week? I can come to you, and we can get takeout from the restaurant. I miss you. The text I got back was, Once again, you and everyone else chose a dog over my human child. It doesn't matter what niece did. She is a human and deserves to be safe. You're really saying, Well, she started it, about your dog almost attacking my child. You can't keep a dog that would attack a kid for being a kid. And I can't believe you're talking about the next time niece meets a dog. What about the next time your dog meets a kid? The next parent won't be so understanding. OP. They'll call animal control and demand he be put down on the spot. No, we can't meet for dinner like nothing happened. And my response. Sorry, you feel that way. Please let me know when you're ready to talk about it. I'll be here. I know a lot of you think my brother is a DCK. And just hearing about this one incident, I would too. But I really think every single one of us would come off as a DCK if someone wrote a Reddit post asking for advice about the biggest arsehole thing we've ever done. Everyone has their good and bad qualities. Everyone is sometimes a chore to be around. And I love my brother. I don't want to fight with him. And I'm disappointed he's determined to drag this out. I know a lot of you wanted me to just ignore him until he stopped acting like a jackarse or cut him out altogether. But that's just not realistic for me and our relationship. And it's not something I want. I do think my sill is eventually just going to make him talk to me, so hopefully this won't drag on for too much longer. But I'm just really sad about the whole thing. I've done all I can do, though. My sister and I have plans to go hiking this weekend. TLDR. Sill and I are fine. My brother is still being a jackarse. Second story. Entitled parents came back apologizing after they made a Facebook post berating how I'm ungrateful for ruining their surprise birthday party. In reality, they forgot and made that post to save face while humiliating me. So I made a replay post and set the record straight, embarrassing them. IF33 just had my birthday last week. The only problem is that no one in my family remembers. My maternal grandfather passed away about a month ago, and my entire family mom, dad, and two younger brothers flew back to my mother's home country for the funeral. I, unfortunately, could not go as I've only recently started a new job. I wasn't particularly close to my grandfather so I wasn't too upset about staying behind. My family was gone for a total of 22 days, and we FaceTimed and stayed in constant communication during their trip. I think it's great that my mom got to reconnect with family, and that my brothers got a chance to meet everyone. They got back last Wednesday, and have been readjusting due to jet lag since then understandably. My birthday was last Friday, two days after they got back. TBH, I wasn't expecting more than birthday wishes from everyone. But the day passed without a word from anyone. Was I annoyed? Sure. But I wasn't too upset. 
I'm not the biggest birthday person. I ended up having a nice birthday dinner with my boyfriend and a few friends. All hell broke loose. On Saturday afternoon, I got a really angry phone call from my dad. I guess my boyfriend did a special Instagram post for me, and my brothers saw it and showed my parents. I had no idea he did this, as he isn't a big poster. Anyway, I could hear my mom crying in the background while my dad laid into me, saying that they were sorry they forgot, but not saying anything, and then posting about it online was passive, aggressive, and mean. I told him that I wasn't upset, and that I didn't think a 33rd birthday was that big of a deal anyway. He said a few more things before abruptly ending the call. I didn't hear from my family the rest of the weekend. Today Monday, I woke up to a bunch of notifications. I guess my mom did a Facebook post talking about ungrateful kids and how I ruined their surprise party for me and tagged me. My extended family seemed to agree that I was a jerk. I've tried calling my mom, but she didn't answer, so I posted my own reply and said, You guys forgot, and no one wished me a happy birthday unless you count dad calling and yelling at me. Both of my parents have been calling all morning, but I don't want to take their calls yet. Ada? Edit. Thank you for the birthday wishes. Comments. Brit sure. NTA. It seems like they are trying to make you feel guilty for nothing. Were they really planning a surprise birthday party? As per your mom's Facebook post? OP. I have no idea. I asked my boyfriend about it. And he said no one contacted him about it. But who knows? Fine and I'm. It doesn't seem likely. If they knew about your birthday and had something planned, they would have just asked you over Saturday and said, Surprise. It sounds like they are covering up what they forgot by trying to blame you. Mbop up up to it. NTA that their reaction is to get mad at and guilt trip you for what? Having a boyfriend who makes a declaration of love on social media. To avoid having to feel any guilt or take any responsibility speaks volumes. Surprise party. To quite venerated philosopher Cher Horowitz, as if, Judgment. NTA. Update. One day later. Hi all. I tried posting this on the Ada sub, but it's too long. I've been reading as many comments as I can. I do have a quick update, but I wanted to address some questions. 1. My boyfriend's post. He had no idea that my parents hadn't acknowledged my birthday until my dad called. I never mentioned it because, again, I wasn't angry. The post was just a picture of us at the restaurant with my birthday cheesecake. The caption verbatim was, Blessed to see you make another trip around the sun. I love you. There was no mention of anything else. I also wasn't aware of the post until my dad called about it. 2. This is very out of character for either of my parents, which is why I'm not going to go no contact. The way everything escalated is bizarre, but it gives me a better understanding of the situation. Hopefully it will for everyone else as well. On to the update. After everything happened yesterday, I told my boyfriend about the Facebook thing, and he agreed that I should just not deal with it for the day. I turned my phone off and just chilled out. Around 6 p.m., my boyfriend got a text from my brothers asking if they could come by because they wanted to see me and bring me the candy they brought back for me. I agreed, and they came over, along with my parents. At this point, I was annoyed to see my parents, but we let everyone in. My boyfriend made sure I was alright and took my brothers out back so I could be alone with my parents. My mom started crying immediately and sobbed out. I'm sorry. I don't know about you, but seeing my mom cry started to make me cry. My dad then explained what happened. Apparently, they absolutely forgot about my birthday again, understandable. My paternal aunt had come over on Saturday to see my parents. It's worth noting that she does not like my mom, for whatever reason. Since he's been around for the last four years, my boyfriend follows my brothers and a few of my cousins, and vice versa. My cousin saw the post, showed my aunt, and asked my mom how my birthday went. Side note. My extended family did reach out to wish me a happy birthday. They just didn't know my family forgot. I guess my mom was caught out. And my aunt went in on her being a bad mother, and all that, saying at least I have my boyfriend. My dad got upset, told my aunt to leave, and said they already had something planned they didn't. That's when he called me. They never saw the post, and I was wrong to think my brothers showed them. My dad said he felt awful for yelling at me and apologized, but he explained that he hated seeing his wife so upset. They took the weekend to cool down. But as many of you guessed, my mom tried to save face via Facebook. She explained that she didn't think I would see it since I'm not usually on. What she didn't realize is that when she typed my name in the post, my username was populated, thus tagging me. She was shocked and embarrassed when I responded and started getting calls and texts from the extended family. She came clean to my dad about it 
and that's when they tried calling, but I wouldn't answer. My mom looked very distraught, and I just told her that everything was okay, and that I'm sorry that I responded the way I did. It's evident that she's taking her father's passing extremely hard, and I don't want to pile more on her. Now's not the time. My dad said it's a few days late, but he'd love to order pizza and just hang out. I agreed. My boyfriend and brothers came inside, and we spent a few hours listening to stories about my grandfather and my mom's childhood. It's definitely a birthday I won't forget, but I guess all is well that ends well. I would like to point out that we do not like my dad's sister. She's an awful person, but my cousins are amazing, so my dad tolerates her. My mom can usually handle herself around my aunt, but she's in a really vulnerable state, which is how this escalated. I'll probably talk to her about it again, just not anytime soon. Also, thank you for the birthday wishes. Comments. Western Aoli 2767. I am not saying you should cut your parents off by any means, but this is the most half-arsed apology. Your father called and screamed at you because he forgot your birthday. Your mother made up a fake party and called you an ungrateful brat on the internet, thinking you'd never see it so that you'd look like an arsehole. Their insults were incredibly public and nasty, and their apology was secretive. I'd ask for an apology as public as the insult. I'm sure they are embarrassed. They forgot. They should be. Sure, your mom's father died. But that's no excuse for dad to forget. And if they'd forgotten or been off on the date because of jet lag, that would have been one thing. That's not what happened, though. Razzles and dazzles. It sounds like there were some extenuating circumstances, including being lambasted by someone as well as just recently burying a family member. They have recognized they made an awful mistake and are clearly incredibly remorseful. As OP said, her mom was in a vulnerable state, so her dad likely forgot because he was focused on his wife's grief. Does this justify their behavior? No, does it make it okay? No, but the goal of remorse and apologies is to make sure the behavior doesn't repeat. And since this isn't a pattern for them, they don't usually do this. There were extenuating circumstances, and most importantly, they feel bad about what they did. I doubt this will be a recurring situation, so I see no benefit to continuing to beat this dead horse. OP is handling this in a great way. She really wouldn't accomplish anything by pressing the matter further except making them even more like SHT. And it's not like they are treating it like it's NBD. If it still bothers her months later, she can bring it up again when mom isn't as distraught. Third story. I thought my husband was cheating with my sister. But it turns out she actually sought him. He's feeling guilty and scared that I would leave him taking our kids, thinking no one would believe him. So I went bad SHT crazy on my sister. Forced her to come clean with her husband, whose relationship is already pretty damaged. My head is a mess at the moment, so please excuse me if I'm all over the place. Yesterday morning, my husband quickly got a bag ready without my seeing it, came to me, and told me my sister sucked his DCK, and that he thought it would be best if he left for a while and gave me space. That was it. I've pretty much been left in the dark since. He seemed very stressed and upset. I just stood there, a little dumbfounded. My sister has been going through a very hard time, the last few weeks, and has spent a lot of time at ours initially with her partner, but around a week ago, they started having issues, so she just came and unloaded their problems. She came over Sunday night and ended up staying over, but I didn't notice them slipping away together at any time. So far, the only communication I have had with my husband has been about our child. I've asked him over and over what's going on, and all he tells me is that he is still trying to figure it out. What is there to figure out? I can't believe that, just like that, everything I know is in tatters. Everything we've built together, everything we have, he's chosen to throw it all away. And to just tell me that and leave, I'm totally heartbroken. I never, in a million years, saw this coming. I also thought me and my sister had a stronger relationship. The betrayal from her has me feeling so lost right now. I've seen many horror stories on here with infidelity, and stupidly, now that I'm in this situation, I have absolutely no idea where I go from here. I know everyone will tell me to leave him. But it's more complicated when there are kids, houses, or businesses involved. And I don't even know what went on. No one will talk to me. The mental pictures are driving me insane. I'm not ready to talk to friends or family yet. So I'm asking Reddit. What do I do? Restarting life at 32 sounds like a nightmare. Edit. Many people are suggesting I move money or restrict accounts. In a pathetic move, I texted him again to ask what was going on and to please talk to me before I contact lawyers and secure my accounts thinking this would get a reaction. He replied simply, saying to do what I needed to do, and that he could come back tonight to explain what happened. Depending on how this goes, 
I may or may not make an update post. I just don't get why I'm getting the runaround. Update. A lot of you were right. I wasn't going to do this. But I have had, and am still getting lots of comments and messages for an update. So here we are. I have since spoken to my sister. My husband came home that night as well. He packed a bag with more stuff, sat down with me, and told me what happened. We have rentals, and he was staying in one that was currently empty. A lot of you were right. My sister straight up assaulted him. I'll try to keep this short, but I'll add some extra details I missed in my first post to clear things up. This all happened on Sunday. She has been going through a lot the past month, so this has been a regular thing, and the past few weeks things have been getting worse with her partner, so lots of venting. She said several times that night that she didn't want to go back home, and she told us that before she left, she also told her partner not to try to contact her because she was going out to get a break from him. My husband smokes a ton of cannabis, and this year he started buying the oil, I think it is, and making his own caping cartridges in an illegal country. That's why he makes his own. He mixes various strengths for the day and much stronger ones for the afternoon. The whole night, he was on the strong side and passed it around. We were all definitely feeling it, so I stopped, and they continued well into the night. I said I was getting ready to call it a night, and everyone agreed. I got up to see the dogs. We have a litter of puppies that we have set up space for in the garage. I was gone for maybe five minutes. Came back out to my husband on his own. Said my sister was in a bad way with the oil, so she went to bed. That was when we went to bed. He got up in the morning and left. My husband said this was when it happened. Out of nowhere, she grabbed the waist of his trousers, yanked them down, and went to town. Went so far as to actually grab his hands, as if to stop him from going anywhere. It lasted maybe five seconds before he managed to get up. He asked her what she was doing. She just said sorry and went to bed. I knew going into this, I was probably going to get lied to. But lucky for us, we have security cameras all around the house and the whole ordeal was on camera. He pulled it up on the iPad and showed me. I didn't actually want to see the act, but he insisted. He's terrified that even with proof, he's still going to be labeled as if he pursued this. He thinks that I'm going to leave him regardless, and that he deserves it. He's scared he'll lose his family and everything we have. My sister's partner left his last relationship due to infidelity, and my husband is ill over the fact that he feels responsible for it happening again. My husband is okay, but feels totally guilty about all of this and doesn't want the fallout to happen at all. He wishes everyone could just forget it ever happened and go on like normal. And I've told him there's no way that's going to happen. I finally got to talk to my sister. She hadn't blocked me. She just ignored my calls and texts. We texted her through my husband's phone. And while doing that, I noticed she had actually texted him a few times since this happened. Literally just a chain of. I'm so sorry I messed up. I'm so sorry. I don't know what happened. Still nothing for me. Anyway, she called. We put her on speaker. And I asked her what happened, thinking she was going to lie. But she ended up saying the same thing my husband did. She couldn't give me a reason as to why. She cried the entire phone call. Woe is me. We all hate her now, etc. But yeah, no reason. She doesn't know why she did it. It was the biggest mistake of her life. Apparently she called in sick for work, and has just spent the days driving around aimlessly hoping a freak accident would take her out. I lost it and went completely ape SHT on her. My husband kept trying to defuse it, which just got me more annoyed. We had it out because I felt like he was defending her. His argument is that she is obviously not in a great place, and he doesn't want anyone in a position where they feel like they need to hurt themselves or worse. This did not calm me down, and I'm not proud of it. But I did go on to send her several texts, telling her exactly what I thought of her. We also told her to speak to her partner because we planned to tomorrow, and it would be much better coming from her than from us. My husband really does not want to have that conversation with him. So that's pretty much where we are. An utter SHT show. Me and my husband will get through it together. I've made sure he knows I'm on his side. I will suggest therapy for him, but ultimately, it's his choice. I don't see my sister's partner sticking around. Our kids are very close and see each other a lot. I'm not really sure what will happen there, but it's not fair for the kids to lose out on that relationship. We have a lot to work out. Thank you for all your comments. A lot of you actually said this is what it sounded like happened, so I was sure to be as understanding as I could be. Wish us luck. Edit. To expand a bit on the cameras. Yes, in the back of my head, I know the cameras are there, but they were there before we moved in, and I really don't think about them. They're only outside the house. 
I have no idea how to actually check recorded footage. My husband has always dealt with them. And I had no idea when or where this actually happened. I have told him he has every right to press charges. But he is adamant that he does not want the police or anything else involved. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.